All right. So uh, when I held this uh, presentation a week ago, uh, someone said that the uh, uh, initial slide looked a bit like uh, an obituary. So uh, yeah, <laughs> I guess uh, <laughs> welcome to my funeral. Uh, and uh, yeah, so who am I or was I? Um, I am uh, Kim Dindarier, uh, or Atalis on GitHub. And I've been using NixOS since 2017. And I'm working for a company called Excellent Audio, uh, which makes uh, virtual music products, uh, plugins. And uh, yeah, we're uh, quite often hiring uh, programming talent. So if you're interested then, yeah, in C++ programming mainly. Uh, and yeah, uh, in the uh, Nix pack in Nix packages, I've mostly been working on service modules like this course and GitLab uh, and Keycloak. Yeah, so impermanence. Uh, NixOS can boot with very little in place. Uh, you only need boot and Nix, and that's pretty much it. And everything outside of these mount points can be generated when you boot for the first time. And remove everything outside, uh, and you'll get a system with only what you've declared uh, in your system, in your NixOS configuration. Uh, yeah, and this is the foundation for an impermanent setup. On every reboot, your root partition is completely wiped. And uh, just using this could work fine for a kiosk setup, perhaps, uh, or a uh, server scenario where all your state, uh, like all the state you want, is external anyway. But in most cases, you probably want to keep some state between reboots. Uh, and to make this easy, we provide two persistence modules, one for NixOS and one for Home Manager. And they allow you to declare which files and directories you want to keep. But why? Uh, it forces you to declare settings you want to keep. And it keeps accumulation of craft to a minimum. And it also lets you experiment with new software without fearing cluttering up your system. So, now that I've convinced you to, to try this, uh, this is what you'll need to do uh, to get it going. Uh, first of all, you need a root file system that gets auto-wiped. Uh, that is ephemeral root storage. And then you'll need a volume which persists between reboots, the persistent storage, and at least one of the persistence modules which creates links from, uh, yeah, from the ephemeral storage into the persistent storage. So first of all, the auto-wiping route, how do you set that up? Uh, there are a few ways to do this. Uh, and uh, yeah, we'll look at two of the popular ways to do this. Um, so first of all, tempfs is probably the easiest way to do this. Just use tempfs for your root file system. Uh, and with tempfs, everything is stored in RAM, so it's automatically uh, deleted when you reboot anyway. Um, this is al also probably the easiest way to set up impermanence on systems which use a traditional file system, like uh, x4 or xfs or something for the root file system currently, because you don't have to repartition uh, well, or, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. Uh, however, it comes with some pretty significant drawbacks. Uh, you can very easily run out of memory uh, or a disk full scenario, since you're using your RAM, uh, your RAM as the root file storage. And if the system crashes or you lose power, then everything is gone, uh, even like most of it you probably didn't want to keep, but uh, some of it uh, you might just not have had time to actually uh, move it over to persistent storage. 
So using it tempfs is pretty simple. Uh, you basically just declare it as yeah, set, set the fs type to tempfs, uh, and that's it. Um, a more advanced way to set things up is to use butterfs subvolumes, or at least a regular file system. You can use setfs, and there are examples other, in other places um, on how to do this. Uh, but then you, so you use a normal file system, but you manually or yeah, automatically clean it up between boots uh, with a script. And uh, yeah, relatively easy to use a new subvolume uh, in ButterFS as the root on boot. Um, and this also allows you to keep a number of old routes around. So in case the system crashes, you still uh, have access to it, or if you forget. If you forgot that you actually needed something and you've rebooted a few times, then like yeah, you can still access it. Uh, and yeah, so let's look at a setup that uh, would automatically remove routes that are older than 30 days. First of all, we need to declare the root file system, uh, and here we just say that the root subvolume of our butterfs file system uh, is to be used as the root. And then we want to create a fresh subvolume and move the old one out of the way. Uh, we need to run a small script, uh, and it needs to be it needs to run when the device has just become available, but before it's mounted. And that is the uh, yeah, you can accomplish that with the uh, post device uh, host device commands option. Uh, so first of all, we need to mount the uh, actual butterfs volume, uh, and that's where the subvolumes will be located. Then we move the subvolume, the old subvolume, to a subdirectory and timestamp it. So, yeah. <laughs> um, then next we need to clean up the old subvolumes. So we filter out all the older sub, the, all the subvolumes that are older than 30 days and delete them. Uh, and unfortunately, butterfs progs lacks a recursive subvolume delete command, <laughs> so we need to kind of implement that ad hoc as well, because uh, otherwise, it, like if you have subvolumes in your subvolume, then it will complain that yeah, you already have you have subvolumes in this. You need to delete them first. So, um, and I, yeah. <laughs> I looked into the code, and it's actually pretty easy to implement recursive subvolume delete in ButterFS progs because they have the API internally for it. But yeah, for some reason, it's not exposed. So yeah, maybe in the future, uh, this can be simplified quite a bit. Uh, yeah, and then lastly, we just create a new root subvolume and unmount the file system. All right, so on to the persistent volume. Uh, and this will finish out the, uh, finishing off the uh, file system setup. Uh, and yeah, it's pretty, pretty uh, easy. You just need a new volume. Uh, like here in this configuration, I just put it at a slash persistent, but you can put it wherever you want. Basically, it just needs to be any kind of volume uh, that will actually store the data. So, yeah, not tempfs. And then we have the persistence modules, which is where the project sort of comes in. Um, and yeah, now that we have the ephemeral and persistence storage set up, uh, we need some way to make the files that we want to store in the persistence storage appear in the ephemeral storage. So create links between them, basically. Uh, and this is what the modules help us with. They provide an interface to declare which files and directories uh, you want to persist. And for those files, they set up bind mounts and links at runtime. So using the module, it's pretty easy. You just import it. Uh, or you can use the provided NixOS modules impermanence output. Uh, 
and yeah, this adds the environment slash uh, environment dot persistence option. And to understand it, uh, yeah, let's look at an example. So, environment persistence is an attribute set of submodules, and each correspond to a path to persistent storage. And under this path is where the files and directories will be stored. So, uh, since I, in my example, set up slash persistent to be the persistent storage, I have that here. And, yeah, it's common to only have one, uh, one of these, but it can be useful to have more. Uh, say, for example, you have some state that you want to back up and some state that you don't really care about, then you can have, uh, yeah, two, persist uh, two st persistent storage places. And you can also give them friendlier names uh, and declare persistent storage paths through the persistent storage path option. So this, especially if you're using a backup, it could be, uh, or if you're spreading out your configuration between multiple uh, files or modules, then this, yeah, gives you an easier na easier name to type. But for simplicity, let's just look at one. So the directories you want to keep. Uh, should be declared with the directories option. And the paths are relative to the root. So in the example here, the path to the real var log directory will actually be slash persistent slash var slash log. Uh, and the files are listed separately, but work the same way, basically. And if either target or source directory doesn't exist, then it will be created. Uh, and if you need to, you can declare permissions and ownership uh, that the directory should be created with if it doesn't already exist. So, and for files, you can declare the uh, parent directory permissions. Um, yeah. For files and directories in a user's home directory, there's a separate option, uh, users.username. And the sub-options, uh, directories and files work the same way as the main ones, but paths are here relative to the user's home directory, and default permissions and ownership is adjusted to match the user. So, uh, <clears throat> as an alternative to using this, the, uh, the users.username option, we also provide a home manager module. And the usage is basically identical. Um, it's nowadays a little bit less flexible, maybe, than the uh, NixOS version of it. But it, the goal is that it should be uh, basically the same. Um, yeah, and so for each of these declared items, the modules do the following. They create the missing directory and parent directories in the persistent storage. They clone the par parent directory structure with permissions and ownership from the persistent storage to ephemeral storage. So, yeah. So if you've set permissions or, or uh, ownership on the directories, when it's copied, when, when that is set up in uh, your root, your tempfs root or whatever, then all, those, all that uh, is um, kept. So, and yeah, and then it bind mounts the item uh, into ephemeral storage. Except that for non-existent files, sim links are used instead of bind mounts. And bind mounts are almost always preferable to sim links when available, but they can't point to non-existent files. So if you want to 
so you would either have to create the file, but that would make many programs uh, react with, well, this file is like this file is empty. This this is wrong. Um, or you create a symlink, and the symlink can point to uh, something that doesn't exist, and then many programs uh, will just create the file through the symlink. Um, not all, but but many. Uh, oh yeah, and the main reason to use bind mounts instead of um, instead of symlinks normally is that symlinks are visible to many programs, but and some uh, programs actually will just remove the symlink uh, and create the file in place instead uh, for security reasons normally because. Um, it could be pretty bad, but so it's a reasonable, uh, reasonable behavior in many cases. But uh, for our use, for our purposes, that's not what we want. Uh, but bind mounts basically appear as if the file is already like in place, and uh, yeah. So if they if they are usable, they are preferable. And uh, yeah, and the modules aim to just always provide the the best possible uh, non-destructive behavior and to require as little configuration as possible. So, uh, yeah. And yeah, that's it. If there are any questions or yeah, anything? Oh yeah, I if you want to look at this presentation afterwards, I have the <laughs> you have the build, build command down here. Hi. Um, the BTRFS uh, integration example you showed, mm -hmm. uh, how do you avoid deleting the uh, latest actual bootable uh, derivation if it's more than 30 day days old? How do you safeguard that? So, sorry, I, I couldn't hear the whole thing. It um, on boot, the BTRFS example you showed, deleted mm -hmm. all sub-volumes older than 30 days old. Older than 30 days, correct? Yeah, that's right. How do you avoid deleting the last bootable uh, version of uh, Nix OS? That would also be a derivation and a sub volume. Otherwise, you won't get the ephemeralness out of BTRFS. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's a good question. Uh, so, these roots, uh, they are the, um, the ephemeral storage roots. So basically, everything, all that they contain, is the um, like all the stuff that you haven't uh, configured or like uh, placed in persistent storage, in slash persistence, for example. Um, so these would basically contain files that uh, programs create um, that you haven't set up links for yet. Um, uh, so run state, maybe some caches, and uh, yeah, things like that. Um, or downloaded files, maybe if you've downloaded them to a temporary uh, point. Um, and so these routes shouldn't contain any data that you normally want to keep. It's just that, like, in case you actually wanted to persist something and then your system crashes, then you can go back and, and fetch that data uh, if you mount uh, the root of your ButterFS. Um, yeah, I don't know if that answers. No? Okay. Hi. Uh, do you provide any sensible defaults for interaction with NixOS services? Like having a default for persisting SSH keys if SSH daemon is uh, enabled? Uh, so, yeah, there, there is a, a pull request uh, worked on uh, to, uh, yeah, uh, to implement a system like that. But uh, currently, uh, no, you, you have to declare the stuff yourself. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, the, the goal for the future is to, to provide some sensible defaults there as well. Um, or at least that you can just turn on that I want to store everything for this service. So, uh, so I've gone wild with uh, ZFS snapshots and ZREPL lately, and I've noticed that there's a lot of things that I don't really want in my like home directory snapshots. 
and I've kind of manually been same linking things around, it seems like this would be a better approach to declare the things that I want persisted and then just provide snapshots on that persistent path. Does that sound like a reasonable way to go about creating more succinct snapshots? Yeah, for sure. All right, more questions. We are well ahead of schedule. <laughs> All right. Here. Uh, just a uh, quick question on um, uh, the bind mounts. How composable is that with Lux or any other kind of uh, encryption, uh, full disk encryption? Um, the bind mounts. Well, I mean, I haven't really had any major uh, issues with Lux or or anything like that. Um, I mean, so bind mounts. One of the one of the good things about bind mounts is you can use them across multiple file systems as well. So you can have uh, tempfs, for example, in one place, and then uh, bind mount so, uh, bind mount a file or directory into yeah a completely different file system. Um, and yeah, I mean, it wouldn't it shouldn't leak any information or um, yeah seems to work well. Um, clarification slash follow up. Mm -hmm. Imagine that you make a snapshot after updating your Nix store, and you are wiping the slash Nix store every boot. If you want the ephemeral state of the Nix store to remove any cruft, then you wait for 30 plus days, more than 30 days. Then you reboot your machine. Would your machine still be able to boot, or would the BTRF snapshot deletions then have deleted your last working boot? last working Nix store snapshot? So basically, I mean, so this setup does not mean that you, uh, that you keep your slash Nix in, um, in, in your tempor a temporary root file system. Uh, the Nix store itself would be separate. So that is why I, so be, to begin with, the initial setup here is that you have a slash boot and a slash Nix. Uh, and those are like the required uh, persistent storage for uh, for Nix to even work to begin with. Uh, and then, in addition to that, you have your uh, slash persistent or whatever, and that is the the yeah the files you want to keep. And what would be on the root is everything else. Everything outside of these paths is what will be uh, stored in this route, and that is what will be cleaned every 30, uh, 30 days. And normally, if you use tempfs, it would be cleaned out just if you lose power, basically. So. All right. Uh, let's give another round of applause. <laughs>